Hello guys, yes, it's time to take out the Vuso engine from this Alpha 166. Um, this time I will not take out the subframe because normally I do that when I have a lift. I take out the engine, gearbox and subframe assembly all in one chunk and let the body of the car raise up with the lift. On this case, being on the ground, I will try to do it from above. Take out the hood or the bonnet and remove the engine and gearbox from above the car. For that I need to disconnect the, dri the drive shafts, I need to take out all of this mess of wiring and uh, some connections to the power steering and some other stuff that I hear still connected to the car. So The biggest issue on this uh, wiring loom is really the LPG system that is adapted to this car. Uh, it's all tangled together, I'm trying here to make a sense of it, to take out here the control unit for the LPG out, out of uh, arm's way. Um, all of the wiring loom, all of the harness has to be... I like to take it to a side to make room for the engine out procedure. Taking out some plugs, some uh, connections. Sometimes, sometimes it's not easy because the LPG system is bonded together with the normal loom. In here, I am taking out some um, piping to disconnect the engine to the radiators, to the body of the car, and so on. Here, the intake pipe for the turbo. It's also coming out with the vacuum tubes that go to the electro valve, the solenoid valve, for the control of the wastegate. As you can see here, the, way the control valve for the wastegate. One more pipe to do, and this one does not want to come out so I use a pair of pliers, adjustable pliers to break loose the the pipe, the hose and then with my hand try to feel if it is coming out and it, it, it is again fighting the loom trying to push it back without damaging anything because when raising the engine just a, bit, a little bit of uh, prison on the wiring loom will cause a lot of damage on it. So here a connection for the gearbox reverse light sensor and um, the speedometer and the alternator wires too. In here to take out this connection for the gearbox linkage, I'd normally use a 12 millimeter open end wrench. In here I have a 13 and it, 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 it works, okay? But the space is not really all that good. So I go back around and uh, just a little more force. There you go. And on the bottom one, the same thing. Here I have much more space and it's much more easy and quick. To take out the cables, I normally take out this uh, shim over here and uh, on this case it will not be enough but I le left this on the final edition of the, of the video because in your case you may just uh, uh, need just to take out this shims to take out the cables. On my case I have to take out the entire support for the cables. But I leave the two procedures so you to understand how to do both of things. So it's out and now I understand that the cable is not flexible enough to be removed. So in here I have three 13 millimeter head nuts. The third is not existent. This first one that I tried is all messed up and the third one is good. It's the only one that I can save. And now, with a better, bigger 13 socket, I try to take out the nut 
and I can. And as you can see, it's all mangled up and all... I don't know what happened there. Well, I know, but I don't, don't understand why so much fighting over a nut. And now I take out all of the assembly, the support assembly of the cables. And once again, I try to put it in the position like the wire loom that uh, when the engine is coming up, it does not foul on anything. Here I have the cable, the main cable for the alternator and starter. It comes with the engine. Here on the slave cylinder for the clutch, uh, normally on the Alpha 156, I just take it out like this. I take out here this C clip and I push back the pump, the cylinder, and uh, it is um, in this way uh, stays with the body of the car. On this Alpha 166 is not possible, but like the the gear cables, I left this on the final edition so you to see how it's done. But it it is stuck. That is not a, not a problem because I have a brand new slave cylinder to install on this engine, because this one is completely ripped. And here I take out the flexible and hard lines for the slave cylinder. And once again, both of the methods can work for you. Just to, you just have to choose the better one for your case. Look, another loose bolt. On this car, it's just things like that. There are ones that are very tight. There are another that are too loose and sometimes not existent being screws, washers, nuts, bolts, whatever. I'm trying to create space because I'm tending to believe that this engine will require a lot of uh, room to come out. So I decided to take out the fans, but then I thought, well, maybe, okay, maybe it's better to take out all the assembly. And uh, that's what I'm doing here, taking out the cross member on the front. Hello, <laughs> taking out there the front uh, parts of the bumper and this lock, this latch. Near the latch I started to see something, well, not so good. Some rust, some uh, overspray, something happened on this car. And then I realized a front accident happened on this car. We'll get to that. So I have here the intercooler. It's a bit fiddly to take out. You have to take out the, the bottom hose for the intercooler to pass through the AC pipe. Okay, now I'm taking out the zip ties that hold together the wiring loom. And now taking out the connections for the resistance of the first uh, speed of the fence and taking out the plugs of the fans. Taking out the AC system, uh, it does not have gas and it, it never will with this condenser over here. The condenser is very much toasted. It's very, uh, very bad for from the accident and also it has a lot of corrosion. On this bolt, again, so much tightness for what? This is an aluminium compressor. Cannot be that tight. You will strip the threads. And this radiator for the engine never ever ever had come out of the car. Because this hose over here still has the original factory clamp. I like to take it out like this with a small screwdriver. And as you can see, it came loose. And now it's just a matter of uh, twisting the pipe and take it out. And as you can see right now, the condenser is very much, very bad. I'm trying to take out there that uh, hose for the condenser. And as you can see, the condenser is very, very bad. Almost, almost touching the water radiator for the engine, or the, the coolant radiator for the engine, 
and that can create a big problem because uh, you have um, humidity and leaves and dirt and whatever touching both of the radiators and in that way they will uh, become rotten the AC does not matter but the water one matters a lot now taking out here the whole assembly comes out very easily taking out the engine mounts this nut was loose another one loose this engine supports itself on the subframe so it's uh, it's nice to be able to take out almost all the way the three engine mounts here i'm starting to release the three bolts for this small adapter i will remove it later on the transmission shafts you have six bolts on each each uh, transmission or half axle and uh, the nut over there behind it locks itself on the gearbox flange if it is the right uh, nuts as you can understand so you just have to take out the six bolts right here i'd like to take a screwdriver and put it on the disc to stop the assembly for sp from spinning you can also do this with the uh, impact gun or however you want to do it you can do it the bottom rear right side the engine mount it's just held on with one uh, with one nut to the engine of course and right there on the steering box i did saw that both of the boots are torn apart apart so that has to be dealt with on the right front engine mount the same thing just a nut my ratchet does not fit on there but no worries and now finally i started to move the engine just to feel what it wants to do because uh, you need to understand the center of gravity of the engine and as this engine has no heads it has no weight so it it wants to to lean to the gearbox side it's the heaviest side of the assembly so i have to do some adjustments this part here uh, it was about one hour to to do I already took out uh, some uh, some engines from this model, diesel engines, okay, but always with the subframe out, okay, to the ground and with a lift. Doing this on the ground, engine up, the V6 engine, is a first for me. So, uh, despite the the fact that I already took out hundreds of engines of various cars, brands, makes and models, it's it's always different. It's always something. Uh, if you remove something, in this case the heads, it behaves differently and you have to constantly chase any grabbing uh, wiring harness or a hose or a vacuum pipe or something. On this case here I started to see that the gearbox will not pass this part of the um, ABS control unit. And I was really starting to get frustrated with that because uh, now I have to bleed all the system. But then I thought, well, maybe not, because they, the other shop, replaced the flexible hoses and they did not did the bleeding of the system. Well, uh, so I have to do it, might as well take out the old assembly. But before that I was trying to take out only the support, but then no, I gave up. <laughs> I have to take out everything. Just leave the the hoses there in the pipes. To take out that um, that ABS unit, I did not record it because I want to do a special video for that for a very, very, very difficult to remove ABS unit. And if you can do that, you can do all of the cars, at least at, at, in my view. And more than that, I was losing daylight as you can see the image is becoming a bit uh, 
foggy and uh, grainy so I have to w hurry with this part again trying to feel the center of gravity try to raise it a centimeter two centimeters and again the brake pipes there catching on a gearbox because someone forgot to uh, put the brace there on the side of the body of the car again the center of gravity a little little bit towards the gearbox going up again trying to catch there the brake pipes this will be a mess to do once the engine is assembled and put back together inside the car it will be difficult to put in it's always more difficult to put in an engine than to take it out believe me eventually i did uh, start to gain more, more space because the engine bay is more like a v-shaped thing and as i go up i can get more and more space to rotate the engine and uh, try to fill it up one more thing that was on my way was the LPG pipe, the main pipe for the gas. But I give it a bit of a nudge to the side and uh, I don't worry about that. I d really don't like LPG systems. And the LPG system on this car for me breaks my heart. But the owner uh, has the final say on that. But it is being considered to eliminate the system. Finally the engine is out. It was not necessary to remove the hood. The gas struts are, are a bit, little bit weak, but uh, with my arm I could um, lift up the hood without hitting the crane or the hoist. And the engine finally is out. That exhaust pipe over there hanging, it was because when I took out the heads, I had to take out the, the manifolds of course, and uh, that pipe was left hanging. Now, on the next episode, I will uh, disassemble all the components around the engine, take out the gearbox, flywheel, pumps, compressor, whatever, see inside, open up the oil pan, take out the cylinders, take out the liners, and see what the hell is happening inside this engine. Really curious for that. I really hope you like this video, guys. See you next time. Bye.